In this tutorial, I want to look at using Maven within Eclipse, but I don't know what your environment is, so I'm just going to assume that we need to check for a couple of things. The first of all, we need to check that there's an M2 Eclipse plugin installed in your Eclipse environment. And to do that, we just go to the Help menu, scroll down to About Eclipse. You've got a row of icons here. Now if you've got an Eclipse icon with a red M2, then you already have M2 Eclipse installed. If not, don't worry because I'll show you the process of how to install M2 Eclipse. And also, if you already have M2 Eclipse installed, I'll show you the process of upgrading it to the latest release. If you click on this button here, Maven Integration for Eclipse, I'm currently running on version 140, but I know 141 releases out and I want to upgrade to that because I want to take advantage of all the new features and the bug fixes. Let's close out of here and we'll call up our browser and this is the website you need to go to www.eclipse.org m2e download the bit we're really interested in is the update sites because we want to update to the latest recommended release and the way we do that is where we take a copy of this URL head back to our Eclipse environment now once back in Eclipse we head off to help install new software now remember, this is the same process if you're actually installing the plugin from scratch. So head to work with dialog box or text box and paste the URL in there. Hit the add button and we'll give it a name of M2E. OK that. And it comes up with Maven integration for Eclipse, which is basically M2 Eclipse. And we want to install that. So select that checkbox. Make sure both are selected. And the other thing I unselect is contact update sites. By doing that, it improves the performance of the download. Select next. Okay. Accept the terms of license agreement and finish. And now what it will do is it basically Eclipse will go over the internet and it will download the plugin. And install the plugin and this is the case if you're downloading m2 eclipse with a basic install okay so that's downloaded and installed the plugin i now re need to restart eclipse so click on yes so eclipse is now restarted i'm just going to double check that i've got the version 141 installed correctly going to help about eclipse navigate to the m2 icon maven integration for eclipse 141 that's excellent close that Close that. Before we go any further using Maven with Eclipse, there's an important setup we need to look at. M2 Eclipse uses its own embedded version of Maven, so you don't actually need the command line version of Maven installed for it to work. I can show this by, if we go to Windows, Preferences, and then we scroll down to the Maven tag, expand that, and click on Installations. We see here a checkbox for the embedded version. Now that's actually got an embedded version of Maven itself, and that's Maven 3.04, which is very different to the version we've installed locally, which is 3.2.1. Now I've seen this cause subtle problems on many projects. Quite a lot of projects also use the command line version of Maven as well. They usually rely on the continuous integration environments to schedule build jobs, and those CI environments use Maven to do the build, but they don't use the embedded version of Maven from Eclipse, they actually use the command line version. So as a developer, you're busy working away in your Eclipse IDE and everything's building fine. But as soon as it get to, gets deployed onto a continuous integration environment, you suddenly start getting build failures. These are very subtle and can be very time consuming to find out and resolve. It's fairly easy to resolve this inconsistency. All we need to do is not reference the embedded version of Maven, but to our external version that we installed earlier. To do that, click on Add and navigate to where you installed your version of Maven. I put mine in program files. So select that, Apache Maven 321, hit OK. And there we are, we're no longer referencing the embedded version of Maven, but actually an external version of Maven, which we installed earlier, version 321. Also, we're referencing the global settings provided by Maven 321. Hit the apply button and OK. There's one other important piece of configuration we still need to do to make sure Maven and Eclipse work together properly. And that's to make sure we have a 
default settings.xml file. What I mean by that is we go to Windows, Preferences, and then select Maven, expand that, head to the option User Settings. Now we've got an error cross here, could not read settings.xml file. That's basically because it doesn't exist. And it's not provided by Maven or M2 Eclipse when they're installed. It's actually up to us to create one and set one ourselves. Now the file it's looking for is called settings.xml and that lives within the .m2 folder. The .m2 folder is basically the default folder that Maven stores its local repository. So when you download all your jar files and plugins from the internet, they get stored in a repository which is within the .m2 folder. The settings.xml file also resides there. So what we need to do now is to basically create a placeholder file called settings.xml and then I'll show you the contents that go within that. Okay, so I've filed up Notepad and what I'm going to do is just save an empty file to that directory. Uh, settings.xml What we need to do now is actually put some contents in there that is actually meaningful to Maven. So head over to the following URL in your favorite browser, maven.apache.org slash settings.html and this page will come up. And just under the subheading of quick overview, you'll see some settings XML as a settings tag here. Now these are just placeholder elements which we'll be filling in later. So if we select that and we can cut that or copy that and paste it into our settings XML file. Okay, and then just save. So what we've done is just created a settings XML file, put some default XML that Maven understands in it, and we've saved it within the dot m2 folder within our user profile. Now we need to go into Eclipse and make sure Eclipse can actually see that. So I've cut across to Eclipse. We can basically hit cancel and then go back in to preferences, user settings, and then the red X is gone now. So the warning's gone. We can prove that by clicking on open file. And this is the same file we've basically just created and saved. So we've created our basic settings.xml file, which is really just the default configuration we need to get things working.